This is Exodus chapter 3, and I'm going to read part of it. One day, as Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, out at the edge of the desert near Horeb, the mountain of God, suddenly the angel of Jehovah appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw that the bush was on fire and that it didn't burn up, he went over to investigate. Then God called out to him, Moses, Moses, who is it? Moses asked. Don't come any closer, God told him. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses covered his face with his hands, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have seen the deep sorrows of my people in Egypt and have heard their pleas for freedom from their harsh taskmasters. I have come to deliver them from the Egyptians and to take them out of Egypt into a good land, a large land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites live. Yes, the wail of the people of Israel has risen to me in heaven, and I have seen the heavy tasks the Egyptians have oppressed them with. Now I am going to send you to Pharaoh to demand that he let you lead my people out of Egypt. But I'm not the person for a job like that, Moses exclaimed. I think that is very interesting. I think Moses' first reply to God is very interesting. He told God he wasn't the person for a job like that. It's very interesting to me because I can relate. The rest of chapter 3 and into chapter 4, God tells Moses what to do about going to Egypt, about speaking to the people of Israel to tell them how God was going to take them out of Egypt and take them to a different land and about telling Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. In chapter 4, Moses said this, Please, Lord, Moses replied, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and tongue. And then God said to him, Who makes mouths? Jehovah asked him. Isn't it I, the Lord? Who makes a man so that he can speak or not speak, see or not see, hear or not hear? Now go ahead and do as I tell you, for I will help you to speak well, and I will tell you what to say. But Moses said, Lord, please send someone else. Then the Lord became angry. All right, he said, your brother Aaron is a good speaker, and he is coming here to look for you and will be very happy when he finds you. So I will tell you what to tell him, and I will help both of you to speak well, and I will tell you what to do. He will be your spokesman to the people, and you will be as God to him, telling him what to say. And be sure to take your rod along so that you can perform the miracles I have shown you. The story continues to unfold, and in chapter 6, Moses again mentions his speaking ability. But in the Lord's presence, Moses replied, If the Israelites will not listen to me, then why would Pharaoh listen to me, since I am unskilled in speech? I think this is all very interesting, and it's most likely because I can relate. Eloquent means speaking or spoken fluently and persuasively vividly or movingly expressive. Moses said, I have never been eloquent. I can relate to that. I feel that if there is one thing that I have not been good at in my life, it is speaking. Anyone who has known me in my personal life, especially those who have known me as a child or as a teenager, and to some extent even now, will know exactly what I'm talking about. 
I have not been good at talking or speaking. Of all the people I know, I am the worst at it. I tend to do better in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone or in a very small group of people, but I'm just not a talker. I never have been. I'm usually quiet. Like some people are usually talkative, I am usually not talkative. Social situations are not my forte. Small talk is not my forte. I can play at it and sort of get by, but it's not my thing. I am not particularly fond of it. It's kind of exhausting to me. At times, talking has been more tiring than physical labor. Also, there is this cadence and rhythm and tempo to talking that can vary from person to person, and for some reason, it is difficult for me to dance to this. I think part of it is because I'm thinking more and this slows down my reaction time and by the time I have something to say the other person is on to a different topic. Also in groups of people that are talking I tend to fall back into observing and listening as if I'm watching people talk instead of thinking that I want to participate in it. Also I don't feel much like saying something if it isn't very important. There are many reasons. The bottom line is I feel that if there's anything that seems to come as standard equipment in life that I seem to lack, it is talking well. I'm good at a lot of other things, just not that. I do much better at writing where I have time to think and formulate what I want to say before I speak. This shortcoming of mine, or maybe simply a characteristic of mine used to bother me more than it does now. It used to make me feel defective, deficient, just less of a person in general. The Lord has helped me with that a lot. He's made people differently, so I'm just different in that way. I'm just not talkative except in writing. I don't get energized by being social, instead it is tiring. I'm mostly a quiet and introspective type of person. Okay, that being established, I can relate to Moses saying he had never been eloquent and him saying that he wasn't the person for the job God was calling him to. I can relate to what Moses said very much. I have even wanted an Aaron for myself. Someone to be the talker. These things I hear from God and then put down on paper and write about and sometimes speak about, I have wished that instead of me being the one speaking them, that I could have an Aaron to hand these writings to for them to speak as God leads them to instead of me. I don't really like being the speaker, the face, the one to deliver the message. I'd rather be like a little hermit, hidden away in a cottage in the forest with my writing and my animals, and shuffle off my writings to someone else for them to speak, rather than me being the one to speak. Like if I have some ability to hear God, and some ability to write down lessons and things he's taught me or things he might want to say, let someone else be the mouth that speaks these things instead of me, is what I have felt. I have gone over all of these things in my mind and with the Lord. I have even told the Lord I'm not the best writer. So basically, in saying that, what I meant was, why choose me? To write anything. I'm not the best writer. In response, I believe the Lord told me that yes, I am not the best writer, which kind of surprised me. I thought he would say something more soft and tender like, you're a good writer, don't underestimate yourself. But no, he said that yes, I'm not the best writer. But he went on to say he has chosen me to write things anyway. So, okay, I'll write things anyway. Moses obeyed the Lord anyway. 
even though he wasn't a skilled and eloquent speaker. On top of that, the Lord told Moses he would help him to speak well and that he would tell him what to say. That is assuring. Even so, Moses didn't seem fully assured and still asked the Lord to send someone else, resulting in the Lord giving him Aaron, who was a good speaker. I sometimes wonder why, if Aaron was a good speaker and all, that God didn't just choose him to do the job he gave to Moses from the beginning. I don't know all the reasons why, but I think part of it has to do with the condition of Moses' heart and his receptivity to God. It's not all about the skills a person may have, but are they humble and responsive and in a place in their heart that God can work with. Now Moses was a humble man, more so than any man on the face of the earth. What I hope to communicate through all of this is that if you are not a good speaker, don't let that hold you back from doing something God wants you to do, even if it does involve speaking. Maybe you don't like the sound of your voice on top of not being a good speaker. Try not to worry about it. The Lord will handle it, whether you end up speaking fluently and gracefully or if you speak less than fluently and gracefully. It's not so much how well you speak, but if the power of God is flowing through you, if you are speaking the words he has given you to say. This feels difficult to explain, but I will try. I've observed it. I've observed preachers who speak very well, impressively well, but I get very little living water out of what they are saying. Instead, it is stale, dry, and parched, like a desert. Then I've observed preachers who speak with average skill and not the best grammar, but the living water is flowing like a river, and you are fed and watered by what they speak. It is lush and fresh, this is the difference between when the Holy Spirit is flowing through a person and speaking through them and when a person is speaking from their own understanding. Is their message from God or is it their own? This difference is largely recognized in spirit. Yes, the eloquent oratory appeals to my flesh. It is showy, it is impressive, but to my spirit it is nothing. What I yearn for are words from God flowing through a person, even if they speak with average skill. To me, the fact that they speak with average skill amounts to nothing because my spirit is so taken with their words from God that it surpasses any weakness in their human skills. The power is not in your human skill. The power is from God flowing through you, the vessel, imperfect as you may be. The power is not in your human abilities, it's from God. I know that's really hard for the flesh to hear, as it gets no glory for itself out of this. Are you looking primarily for skilled human speech, or are you looking for words from God? If I wanted to hear someone speak well, and display verbal gymnastics that blow my mind, all I would have to do is listen to a politician. Their ability to obfuscate is impressive. Not to be overly crude, but sometimes I wonder if some of the people preaching in churches are little more than a politician that happens to speak in a church building and chooses religion as an occupation instead of politics. And unfortunately, I am being completely serious in that statement. Once I was talking to a fellow Christian, we were having a discussion about sermons. They were going on about how impressed they were about the speaking abilities of a politician. They admired this politician's 
oratory skills. They were relating this to how that sort of speaking ability is a valuable skill for Christian speakers or preachers to have as well. I understood what they meant. I understand that it can be helpful to speak well and persuasively. Personally, I was disappointed that they were so impressed by how well a politician spoke over being impressed with how wonderfully the Spirit of God can move and work through a person, through speech, no matter if they are a great orator or not. I was disappointed that they seemed more impressed with how well a politician was able to speak over how powerfully the Spirit of God can speak through anybody who is willing to respond to him and open up their mouth, whether they are skilled at speaking or not. I was disappointed that they seemed more impressed by the skill of man over the power of God. In this conversation, I heard them say nothing about God enabling and empowering someone to speak and how that meant more than human skill. I remember myself saying that to them before they started talking about their admiration of the impressive speaking skills of a politician. It was disappointing to hear this from them, yet at this point in my life I don't know why I even exert the emotion of being disappointed about something like this anymore. It is commonplace. It is just that I expected more maturity from a fellow Christian. And you know what? I need to stop expecting that. At least that is how I feel. Most of the time when I have expected maturity from fellow Christians, I end up being disappointed. And not only the apparently high standard of maturity, but more like expecting basic standards, foundational standards, or valuing spiritual values over fleshly values. Is this so rare amongst Christians? Maybe it is. Really, I could hardly believe that I was sitting there in front of this fellow Christian, fellow Christian leader, by the way, and they were talking about the impressive speaking skills of a politician and relating that to how wonderful it would be if they could speak that well too, and how it is a valuable skill for Christian speakers, teachers, or preachers to have. My internal reaction was, are you serious? I was amazed. To me, instead of talking about desiring to speak as well as a politician does, I would talk about how lacking in speaking skills Moses was or how lacking in other ways so many people in the Bible were. And despite that, God used them so greatly. And how wonderful it is that despite my lack and my weaknesses, it is possible that God could use me too. Or for that matter, that God could use anyone who seems to lack in various ways. It seems to me that God often chooses someone who man would never choose, even someone who thinks themselves as not the one for the job. Also, instead of desiring the speaking skills of a politician, how about desiring to be so close and responsive to God that you would speak the words he gives you to speak? On top of disappointment, on my part, it was just sad to hear this from a leader in the church. Maybe I'm wrong, but when someone is a leader in a church, I expect to be able to look up to them to some degree. I don't mean make them a role model replacement for Jesus. I mean, as maybe an older brother or older sister, idealistically speaking, I expected that I should be able to look up to them to some degree. But I see that if I didn't know better, and I took what was said in this conversation about the impressive speaking skills of a politician to heart, I could begin to think that I need to be a skilled speaker before God uses me in a meaningful way. 
And if I began to think that, and then believed that, it would not be true. It could become something of a roadblock to me, or something that unnecessarily holds me back. Getting back on track, I want to encourage those who may not be the best speakers. If the Lord wants you to speak, go ahead and do what he wants you to do. Speak what he wants you to speak. Don't rely on your speaking skills to somehow impart spiritual things to people. Rely on God to do that. Either God will help you to speak well, like he was ready to do for Moses, or he will provide you with an Aaron, like he did for Moses, or he will use you even if your speaking skills are not the best. For me, I have been able to read most of what I speak, which helps me. I suppose right now, my Aaron, my aid, is the fact that I'm able to write down what I say first. Whatever aid you need, or even if you don't have an aid, if the Lord wants you to speak, obey him and he will handle the rest. Maybe I'm not doing a great job, but what I'm trying to say is don't get held back by how poorly you think you speak. I'm trying to say that being a great orator is not a prerequisite to being used by God. Also, I'm not saying that being able to speak well isn't valuable. I'm saying if you don't speak well, it is not something that disqualifies you for God. I'm also saying that what is more valuable than speaking well is your receptivity, willingness, and obedience to God moving and working through you. Moses was not the only person in the Bible to feel inadequate in his speaking abilities. There was Jeremiah. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And then there was Paul, who several times mentions how he spoke. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear, and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith would not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. And we have received God's Spirit, not the world's Spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us, when we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. Indeed, in every way we have made this plain to you in all things. For some say, his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he is unimpressive, and his speaking amounts to nothing. For some say, his letters are weighty and forceful, but his physical presence is unimpressive, and his speaking is of no account. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. It's interesting to me 
that Paul said he came in weakness and fear and with much trembling. I can relate to that, too. I remember when I used to speak from time to time at a church, I would have what I wanted to say written out first. All I would have to do is read it, and still, prior to reading it and speaking it, I would start shivering, like trembling out of nervousness. It happened so regularly that someone who knew me well would see me shaking like that and then know I was going to speak. I would try to calm myself down in my mind by thinking things like, it's no big deal, it's just us here at church, I have nothing to worry about, I'm going to be fine. I felt that I really did function in one of my greatest weaknesses, but I trust that in the end that didn't matter and anything from God shined through in what I spoke. Again, I want to encourage those who feel like they don't speak well, that it's okay. Don't worry about it. If God wants you to speak something, go ahead and speak, and trust Him with the rest.